How do we study the breast cancer progression in a mice? We answer that in this experimental video titled, Generation of Crelox P Knockout Mice for Breast Cancer Modeling and its Detection Using Karyotyping. You must be wondering the significance behind using a transgenic mice. Well, there's so many strains to begin with, they can be housed and grown efficiently. They are widely used to study heart disease and can be genetically manipulated to produce certain proteins, altogether making them the best candidate for breast cancer modeling. The aim of this video is to generate a BRCA1 conditional knockout mice using the Crelox P system and to evaluate these mutants using karyotyping. But, my fellow learners, you must wonder what a Crelox P system is. Well, to begin with, it was first discovered in the P1 bacteriophage which mainly infects E. coli. It is a double-stranded DNA virus with 93 kilobase pair genome which produces the Cre recombinase protein. Once the virus infects a cell, the viral genome will undergo one of the three fates. First, the viral genome will enter the host cell and will be retained as a viral plasmid. Second, the viral genome enters a lytic cycle, thereby reproducing viral particles that will eventually cause lysis of the cell. And lastly, the viral genome upon entering the host cell will integrate with the host genome to form a prophage. In all the three cases, it is observed that the linear viral genome upon entering the cell circularizes. This circularization is a product of LOX P sites and Cre recombinase enzyme encoded by the P1 bacteriophage. Let's talk about the LOX P site. These specialized sites consist of 13 base pair inverted repeats that are separated by an 8 base pair sequence. The 8 base pair central sequence is where the Cre recombinase binds to and carries out its catalytic activity. Cre recombinase carries out three catalytic functions. Firstly, when two LOX P sites, flanking a gene, are oriented in the same direction, Cre recombinase cleaves between the two LOX P sites, leading to circularization and deletion. Secondly, when the two LOX P sites, flanking a gene, are oriented in the opposite direction, Cre recombinase causes inversion between the two LOX P sites. And lastly, when the LOX P sites are present on different sequences, Cre recombinase will cause recombination between the two sequences. Now that we have covered the Cre LOX P system, let's understand the role of the mammalian BRCA1 gene. BRCA1 is a gene that is located on the chromosome 17. It carries out a variety of functions such as regulation of cell cycle, repairing the DNA, so on and so forth. It is, however, mainly known as a tumor suppressor gene. By that logic, mutation or dysfunction in a tumor suppressor gene will cause cancer, and in this case, mainly breast cancer. So, in order to study breast cancer in mice, we first have to construct BRCA1 conditional knockout transgenic mice. For this, the requirements include lab suited mice strains, vector systems, microinjector, medium, miscellaneous apparatus, so on and so forth. Firstly, you extract out the 8 day blastocyst, or a morula from a normal pregnant mice. You then extract embryonic stem cells from this morula. The transgenic vector construct is then microinjected into these cells and allowed to homologously recombine with the ES or embryonic stem cells. Here, there are two vector constructs used. One, which contains homozygous LOX P sites flanking the BRCA1 gene with a neomycin resistance marker, and the second, a hemozygous Cre recombinase gene with a tissue-specific promoter. WAP, upstream tied up with the neomycin resistance marker, you plate these two cells on a peprogrow medium infused with antibiotic G418. The peprogrow medium is one of the most commonly used ATC medium which is composed of an appropriate protein source, carbs, vitamins, trace elements, serum and amino acids. G418 is a derivative of neomycin that is mainly used in animal tissue culture. In a medium, devoid of G418, all cells will grow efficiently, including the ones that have not be appropriately homologously recombined. In the case of a medium containing G418, only a few cells will multiply. These are the cells that have been accurately homologously recombined due to which they possess neomycin resistance. These are the cells that we need and that we work with from here on. These ES cells are then micro-injected back into another 8-day morula. Using a microinjector, the new blastocyst, Morula is then injected into a pseudopregnant foster mother mice that is made receptive to the new blastocyst by mating with a vastomized mice. After 20 minutes 25 days post-implantation of the new blastocyst, the foster mother mice will give birth to transgenic mice pups. The transgenic pups upon maturing will be of two types based on the two types of vector construct. One, with LOX P sites flanking the homozygous BRCA1 gene and the other with Cre recombinase hemozygous gene controlled by the WAP promoter. It is also important to note that the mice with Cre recombinase also possesses its own indigenous copies of BRCA. Upon mating these two mice, the progeny will inherit a single BRCA1 gene flanked by LOX P sites from parent one, 
while it will inherit WAP-induced Cree recombinase gene and an indigenous copy of BRCA1 from the parent too. But, our work is not done here. You say, a single functional BRCA1 gene can still efficiently carry out tumor suppression. In such a case, we then carry out a back cross of the progeny, with its parent one. In this case, the F2 progeny resulting from this mating will be homozygous for the LOX P flanked BRCA1 gene. This progeny is the transgenic mice, with tissue specific, conditionally knocked out BRCA1 gene. The role of tissue specific promoter WAP is of major significance here. WAP will only be transcribed in the mammary tissues, resulting in Cre recombinase being produced only in the mammary cells. Cre recombinase will thus carry out its catalytic activity only in the mammary cells, leading to development of tumors. Expected results for the tumor growth are as follows. The last step of this experiment is to analyze the BRCA1 mutants using chromosomal karyotyping. For this step, you require tumor tissue from the mice, PBS buffer, calcimid, MGM medium, miscellaneous apparatus, so on and so forth. First, you mince the tumor tissue with sterile scissors and then you soak it in PBS buffer. You then add the minced cells to an MGM culture medium plate infused with collagenase, that breaks down collagen in cells. The plate is then incubated in a CO2 incubator for 48 hours. After 48 hours, you transfer a few cells to PBS medium. The PBS-soaked cells are then treated with trypsin enzyme, which digests proteins. The trypsin-treated cells are again washed with PBS buffer. The PBS-washed cells are then treated with colsimid, which is used to prevent spindle fiber formation, and trypsin again, and are centrifuged, Post-centrifugation, PBS is allowed to aspirate, and potassium chloride solution is added to the pellet, followed by shaking. KCL is used to neutralize the charges on DNA. To this solution, an additional ice-cold fixative is added, and centrifuged again. Post-centrifugation, the supernatant is allowed to aspirate and additional PBS is added to dissolve the pellet. This is your working stock. Further, drops of working stock are pipetted onto a clean grease-free sterile slide that had been stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius in a refrigerator using a Pasteur pipette. The drops of the working solution are allowed to air dry, and the slide is immersed into a Coplin jar of Gemsa stain. Post the entire staining process, the slide is then visualized using an oil immersion microscope. The expected results are as follows. In conclusion, transgenic mice for conditionally knocked out, BRCA1 gene, were generated using Crelox P system. The BRCA1 mutation was analyzed using chromosome karyotyping. Chromosomal karyotyping is used to detect the chromosomal aberrations like deletion, duplication, translocation, non-disjunction of chromosomes. It helps to identify the abnormalities of chromosomes like aneuploidy. It is also used in predicting the evolutionary relationships between species. Here is the reference for this video. Thank you.